United States says he, uh, that it won't be accepting Russia's proposal to carry out fresh wave of airstrikes in Syria. Moscow wants to punish groups like Daesh and the Al Nusra Front, who it says are violating the ceasefire. The Russian defense minister said the strikes would also have been aimed at convoys which carry weapons into Syria from Turkey. Well, let's speak now to uh, Ahmed Al Burai. He's a lecturer at Istanbul Aydin University and uh, joins us now. Thank you very much uh, for you. your time. Good evening. Um, Good evening. Why would the United States be unwilling to cooperate with Russia in tackling Daesh, do you think? Uh, the point uh, at the very beginning, the uh, Russian government was not that frank with the United States in terms of the uh, cooperation on the ground. Uh, they started unilaterally the uh, offensive against the rebels in, the, um, in Syria, and they didn't coordinate. And now they came and they unilaterally declared from their own side that they're going to attack uh, Jabhat al-Nusra and other rebels on the ground. So the United States doesn't feel that there is a kind of coordination. They should have consulted them before they take such a decision. But, but has that situation on the ground now change? Would it not be beneficial for Washington to uh, cooperate here with Russia and tackle al-Nusra and Daesh? The point here is the Russians and the Americans, they have different agendas in the quagmire in Syria. Uh, the Russians, they believe that still Assad is the legitimate representative of the Syrian people and he's the president there, while the Americans, they believe that he should go in order to find a reconciliation and a political uh, compromise to the conflict. That's why they don't have the same, they are not reading from the same page on the Syrian conflict. That's why I believe that they are not going to uh, reach this kind of joint cooperation on the ground in terms of the uh, suggestions or proposed operations. As time goes on, how much loyalty do you think Russia has to the Assad regime? They say that they, they're protecting Syria's sovereignty and that they aren't necessarily uh, supporting an individual here in, in Assad. How, how do you assess that relationship as time progresses? Assad for Russia is a very important asset. No one can deny this fact. But we cannot also say that the Russians are not pragmatic when they believe that Assad must go and they have an international consensus on that and they believe their interests are preserved in Syria. I believe in one way or another they're going to sacrifice Assad. But on the short term, this is not not a visible, in my opinion. Mm. So where does all of this, I mean, it looks very much as if Russia is going to escalate their campaign in, in Syria or parts of Syria next week. Where does all this leave the peace process? right now what effect is it going to have uh, that's the ultimate aim of the russian operation the recent operation they're trying to weaken the factions on the ground the rebels they're trying to target them in order to weaken their demands and try to drag them with their own terms and conditions to the negotiation table and that's why i believe the coming few days is going to witness a, a humorous a, a, an enormous uh, escalation on the ground that may lead to a kind of concession from Assad from one side and the factions on the ground from the other side. But is this going to succeed or not? This depends on the reaction of the other regional powers, including um, the United States-led coalition. Okay, Ahmed, thank you very much for thank your time. You. Thank you for coming in this evening. Thank you.